Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'll be doing a quick review of Planet in Peril, an anthology for our time, poetry and photography edited by Isabel Kenyon. Isabel was kind enough to send this to me after some previous reviews, so uh, some of the poetry chat books and whatnot I did. I'll link down below to all of the previous stuff I've, um, you know, covered by her, her press, which is Fly on the Wall Press. I'm going to read you the blurb here and then go through and check out some of my tabs. Planet in Peril, an anthology for our time. When the sciences and the arts begin to work together, a powerful force is created. This anthology was founded upon the belief that words have the power to change. Through poetry, photography and art, creatives across the globe, from the age of 8 to 80, have united to express the urgency of global warming, facing the facts but never losing hope. And then we have some, um, you know, various bits and bobs. Uh, so I would like to point out here, a proportion of the profits from this book will be donated to the Climate Coalition and WWF. And like first, first impressions, this is a beautiful book. I mean, I'll just flick in at random. I'll like show you some of the photography here. Some of the artwork, even the poetry is laid out really beautiful, like the choice of fonts, very high quality paper. And yeah, it's just a stunning achievement, especially for a small press. You can have this as a coffee table book that you'll dip in and out of, but you can also equally just read it from cover to cover, which is what I did. So yeah, let's go through and um, check out some of my tabs. Okay, so we have a forward here by Dr. Michelle Kane, Oxford Martin School and Environmental Change Institute, University of Oxford. And uh, she said, in the 27 years since the Rio Earth Summit in 1992, we have emitted the same amount of carbon dioxide globally as we had between 1751 and 1992. In 2018, we emitted more CO2 than in any other year. And we start off with this poem here, Fall Ash by Helen Mort. If I must come back, let me come as a small tree, slow growing, sturdy, hesitating on the ladder the sun throws down to me. Let me have roots like the hands of a teenage pianist, strong bark and insubstantial trunk. May my branches be modest. When heat scorches the land, I'll give scant shelter, but I'll persist, exploring the earth sideways, steady beneath its parched lip. Let me come as crabapple, juneberry, flowering dogwood, mountain ash. When the sky glows orange, I'll be steadfast, absorbing what this slip road, ring road, high-rise planet gives to me. At night, with no one watching me, I'll rise, blunt phoenix, angular and pitiless, licked by imaginary flames. I also like this one called Tree by Tina Morris. It's opposite this piece of art. A Bee is for Life by Sean Rhiannon Gillers, I think. So, uh, Tree. They didn't tell us what it would be like without trees. Nobody imagined that the whispering of leaves would grow silent, or the vibrant jade of spring pale to grey death. And now we pile rubbish on rubbish in this dusty landscape, struggling to create a tree. But though the shape is right, and the nailed branches lean upon the wind, and plastic leaves lend colour to the twigs, we wait in vain for the slow unfurling of buds, and no amount of loving can stir out weary tree to singing. I'm going to read this little bit out here. This is Human Impact, Our Effect on the Planet, and this is like provided by WWF Facts. Humans and wild animals face new challenges for survival because of climate change. More frequent and intense droughts, storms, heat waves, rising sea levels, melting glaciers and warming oceans can directly harm animals, destroy the places they live and wreak havoc on people's livelihoods and communities. An important ecosystem is the Amazon. The Amazon is a vast region that spans across eight rapidly developing countries, Brazil, Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador, Colombia, Venezuela, Guyana, Suriname and French Guinea, an overseas territory of France. The landscape contains one in 10 known species on earth, 1.4 billion acres of dense forests, half of the planet's remaining tropical forests, 4,100 miles of winding rivers, 2.6 million square miles in the Amazon basin, about 40% of South America. There is a clear link between the health of the Amazon and the health of the planet. The rainforests, which contain 90 to 140 billion metric tons of carbon, help stabilize local and global climate. Deforestation may release significant amounts of this carbon, which could have catastrophic consequences around the world. I'd like to read this one out. This is Villanelle for My Planet by Marjorie Moorhead. I really like Villanelles. It's one of the few like types of poetry that has a specific form that I do enjoy. Treat your home with love, it will sustain you. Unattended, webbing can tear. A net's weave is strong when its connections are true. Our actions have changed things more than we knew. We haven't treated our surroundings with care. Treat your home with love, it will sustain you. Stories are told using many a hue. Facts about deeds, not always laid bare. A net's weave is strong only when its connections are true. The lies we were told by greedy oligarchs grew. Their practice of depletion and pillage for profit, not fair. Treat our home with love, it will sustain you. Let us rip open the veil and see through. We need all be invested in our habitats fair. A net's weave is strong when its connections are true. 
Time has come for action that's anew. Create stewardship in which we all have a share. Treat home with love, it will sustain you. A net's weave as strong as its connections are true. I'd like to read Blackberry Morning by Sam Love, love as well. That's spelled morning as in funeral morning. It's a January frost-free miracle in my North Carolina supermarket where it's two-for-one blueberry sale, so I add them to my shopping cart. Secure from the freaky outside coal, the Chilean bluettes look perfectly cosy in their crystal-clear plastic containers. They look so comfy, I wonder if they still dream of summer in South America. As I eat my morning oatmeal, I ponder the adventure stories of this well-travelled fruit. Could it tell me about the toxic sprays that made it picture perfect? Was it picked by a shaker machine or by campesinos breaking their backs? How was its 4,136 mile plane trip from the Chilean farm to Florida? Did it enjoy its 869 mile truck trip up the interstate? How many miles per gallon does a Chilean blueberry get? Sometime this summer, local pick your own blueberries will ripen on nearby vines and they can take a shortcut across the river to my morning bowl. Then breakfast will be more enjoyable when my mind doesn't have to digest so many perplexing questions. And a lot of these have got little notes at the bottom. So here we have Sam said, we are oblivious to the distance our food travels. Blueberry Morning explores the carbon footprint of one blueberry that travels thousands of miles to my cereal bowl in January. Here's possibly my favourite image here. Our problem with plastic, and it's very important here as well, Ellen Doherty, winner of the Planet and Peril competition photography category. And it says, uh, Ellen said, This photo was captured in Ubud Sacred Monkey Forest in Bali, Indonesia. An urban monkey chews on a piece of plastic left by a tourist. Bali is an increasingly popular holiday destination, but it is slowly drowning in plastic and its wildlife is suffering the consequences. And here we have Yesterday is Too Late by Isabel Kenyon, who is the editor, so I want to read this one. Yesterday, toasted rock-roasted Brits were like geckos, tongs in tepid ales flapping over screens. Yesterday, Notre Dame wept fiery tears for the giant Yangtze turtle, functionally extinct. Yesterday, young people skipped school for their future. Leaders denied climate change. Yesterday, bittersweet heat, breathing fresh fumes and dry skin with babies, mums, pensioners, teens, workers sharing space in a polluted city, which claims asthmatic residents. Yesterday, bittersweet heat, deserts formed for cotton clothes. Brazil wept CO2 skywards, forest lungs wheezed and oceans boiled over rooftops, hands flailing in the tide. Today, outliving Earth's means, we scrabble for yesterdays, stammer apologies to tomorrows. And finally, near the end, we have this sort of collection of... Uh, poems from younger writers which I think is super important because ultimately it's their future that's going to be affected the most you know so this is Don't Forget by Freya Wilson age 10 and before I get started I'm going to read the note so Freya said this poem is to show feeling to make people realize what needs to be stopped I was inspired to write this poem by WWF who makes such an effort to help our struggling planet and suffering animals north south east and west so don't forget don't forget that our trees fall down tender leaves broken and torn don't forget that our fish die, swallowed up by the ghastly pollution of man. Don't forget that our coral fades, the sea creatures mourning over it. Don't forget that our beaches crawl back, while people step over them, not caring. Don't forget that the world is ours to keep and ours to take care of. Don't forget that the world might not turn out okay in the end. Don't forget that we are all animals, we are a team, we are one. Don't forget that we are the first generation to know that our world is under threat and the last who can stop it. So yeah, all in all, really enjoyed this anthology. I gave this a solid 4.5 out of 5. I'm not really sure why I didn't give it a 5 out of 5, to be honest. It's just one of those things, like a gut thing. I'm trying to save 5 for those all-time favourites. But really, honestly, this is so good. Definitely rush out and buy it if you can. And uh, again, it's for a good cause as well. And you'll, you'll be helping to, helping to save the planet. So there you have it. That's what I made of Planet in Peril, an anthology for our time, edited by Isabel Kenyon. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments. Let me know uh, which of the poems was your favourite. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.